In the early 1900s, it was unusual for African Americans to own their own land. But through hard work and sacrifice, a Prince George's County family was able to do just that, a legacy that's carried on today. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, now all of them, uh, all the girls finished high school, but none of the guys did because they quit school after my grandfather died to save the farm, so that's why we're here today. Prince George's County farmer Owen Johnson and his brother-in-law Frank DeVille reminisce about their family's history, tracing back to 1901 when Owen's grandfather, John Robert Johnson, bought 265 acres in Brandywine for $410. We named the farm uh, John Isabel Acres after uh, John Robert Johnson and Isabel Pinckney Johnson Bowie, my grandmother. Back when John Robert Johnson bought the farm, many African-American families worked as sharecroppers, labor in exchange for a share of the crops. But that system is foreign to Frank and Owen. They've always worked on their own farm, thanks to the hard work, sweat, and sacrifices of their ancestors. Not many of us, uh, particularly African-Americans, and I took this for granted, uh, I wasn't a, a sharecropper person. I didn't have to work on someone else's farm. I've always worked here, so I, was, I consider myself fortunate and truly blessed. After spending 30 years in the trucking business, Frank took over the farm. He admits age isn't on his side, and lifting bales of hay on his own isn't an option. So he added some accessories to his equipment collection, like this. It's the bale spear, a tool that attaches to the front of the tractor and helps take the burden off Frank so he can sit back and enjoy the ride. Frank has taken the lead on that. He actually manages the farm and, and, and does a day-to-day -day operation. And he'll tell anybody he wasn't a farmer, but he is now. From trucks to tractors, the decision to come back to the farm was a shift in gears for Frank. We were sitting here with the property and some cattle and some hay and some corn in the field. And we were saying, what are we going to do? With the new equipment, baling hay is not as labor-intensive as it once was, but Frank still has more to do. Not every chore has an attachment. That's when Frank calls on his granddaughter for help. I'm all you need to fill both these buckets for the cows so I can feed them this afternoon. Okay. 15-year-old Morgan helps her grandfather both on and off the field, from bookkeeping to nursing the calves. I help a lot with the calves. Every once in a while, you'll get a calf where the mother does not recognize the calf or will not feed the calf, and then that's my responsibility. Come on! Come on! Here he is, Frank's pride and joy, the Red Angus Bull. Ramsey and his two calves stand out amongst the herd of 30 Black Angus cows. The big red bull may be outnumbered, but he won't be bullied especially when it's time to eat. Ramsey stands his ground. The Red Angus is unique in color, but there's no difference in its meat. For Frank and Owen, it's simply bragging rights. It is an interesting conversation piece. <laughs> we get a lot of conversation, a lot of questions around that. Oh. What we're doing is putting chemicals in, in this uh, tank here, so when the cows lick the salt, the oil mag gets on their head. And this here is, is a rub. And what they do, they get under here and they rub their backs. And um, the chemical is in this too, where it'll get on their back. It looks like the cow rub would do Ramsey some good. This mixture may be the color of a rose, but it smells nothing like the flower. It's a pungent mix of diesel fuel and insecticide that keeps the flies off, for a little while anyway. Frank and Owen are always thinking about the herd's well-being and the future of their farm. Once a month, they prepare the cow rub, and every day, they ponder over who will carry on their family's legacy. After we're gone, let's hope somebody will step up and take our place, because Lord knows we work hard to get it like this. Stream anytime, anywhere with the free PBS app.